All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have a perpetuity immediate has an initial payment of $100. Each subsequent payment increases by $25 for each year. If the annual effective interest rate is 2%, find the present value. Okay, so in this problem, we are told that we have a perpetuity immediate where the payments are increasing every year. And so you wanna ask yourself, is it increasing with a geometric progression or is it increasing with an arithmetic progression? And remember that the difference is that a geometric progression increases by a certain rate or a certain percent and an arithmetic progression increases by a set amount. And so what is happening in this scenario? Well, we're told that each subsequent payment increases by $25 for each year. That is not a percent or a rate. This is a set amount. Every year, the payments are increasing by $25. And so that means that we are looking at an arithmetic progression, which means we have an increasing arithmetic perpetuity. All right, and so if you watched our lesson, which I recommend you do before you look at any of these examples here, we know that the present value is equal to P divided by I plus X divided by I squared, where P is your initial payment and X is the amount that it increases by every year. And then of course, I is your interest rate. And so let's write down each of these values that we know from this problem. We know that the initial payment is $100, so that means that P is equal to 100. And then we know that each subsequent payment increases by $25 for each year. So that means that X is equal to 25. And then we know that the annual effective interest rate is 2%. And so that means that I is equal to 0 0.02. And so it's always good to check to make sure that your interest rate has the same frequency as your payment cycle. And in this case it does, we have an annual effective interest rate, which means it's occurring annually, and our payments are made every year, right? So we're good there, we don't have to worry about converting our interest rate. And so now all we have to do is plug in each of these values into their respective parts of this equation. And so we'll have that the present value is equal to 100 divided by 0 0.02 plus 25 divided by 0 0.02 squared, right? So we plugged 100 in for P, 25 in for X, and 0 0.02 in for I to get this expression. And so we will have that this is equal to 100 divided by 0 0.02, which is equal to 5,000. And then we will add 25 divided by 0 0.02 squared, and that is going to be 0 0.0004, and 25 divided by 0 0.0004 is 62,500. And so this is equal to 5,000 plus 62,500. And so if we add these two values together, we'll have that this is equal to $67,500. And so this is the present value of the perpetuity in this problem that has an arithmetic increasing progression. Okay, let's look at a different example. All right, so for our next example, we have that the first payment of a perpetuity immediate is $500. Each subsequent payment increases by 3% each year. Determine the present value if the annual effective interest rate is 4%. Okay, so once again, we are told that we have a perpetuity immediate, and we know that it is an increasing perpetuity because it says each subsequent payment increases by 3% each year. And so now we go back to that question, is this a perpetuity with an arithmetic progression or a geometric progression? And so if we go back to our problem, it says that each subsequent payment increases by 3%, and we know that a geometric progression is when it increases by a rate or a percent, right? This is not a set amount, it is just 3% of whatever was made in the previous year, right? So in the previous example, each payment was increasing by $25 every time, but in this example, it's increasing by a percentage, not a set amount. And so this is a perpetuity with a geometric progression. And so when we deal with perpetuities that have a geometric progression, we have a nice little two-step process that we can use to calculate its present value. And so here we have that two-step process. You'll see that it says adjusted two-step process. That's because this is a quicker method than what we used for a geometric annuity. In this case, since we are working with perpetuities where the payments increase forever, or they continue on forever, we can simplify that process to just two steps. And so the first step is going to be to value each payment at the valuation date. And so remember, the present value of a perpetuity immediate 
is valued at time equals zero, and the first payment is made one year from today. And so for step one, the present value is equal to that first payment of $500. So we will have $500 times the present value factor to the power of one, right? This first payment is being made one year from today. And so we need to bring it back to the valuation date, which is time equals zero. And so we multiply it by the present value factor to the power of one, and that will take it back to time equals zero, which is where this present value is valued. And so then we will add our second payment of $500, but now it's increasing by 3%. And so in this case, I didn't write it down, but I should have, R is equal to 0.03, right? This is the rate at which our payments are increasing by every year. And so we will multiply by 1.03, which is one plus that rate R, right? If we multiply 500 by 1.03, this payment will be $500 plus an extra 3% of that $500. And so this payment will be 3% more than the previous payment of just $500. And so then we need to multiply this by V squared or the present value factor squared because this payment is being made at year two. And so we need to bring it back to time equals zero by multiplying it by the present value factor squared. And so I'll write out one more payment here, but these do go on forever, so I am going to stop after this one. But our next payment will be 500 times 1.03 squared, right? We're going to multiply by another quantity of 1.03, and that will ensure that this payment is 3% more than this previous payment, right? And so then we want to multiply by V to the power of three, or the present value factor cubed, and that will bring this payment made at time equals three, or year three, back to time equals zero. Okay, and so we can continue to add on these payments forever, but I think seeing the first three payments is sufficient enough to see how we're going to do step two of our two-step process. And so let's move on to step two. Step two says that we will solve the present value using this formula, that the present value is equal to our first term divided by one minus one plus r divided by one plus i. And so I didn't write down what i was equal to. Let's do that real quick. We have determined the present value if the annual effective interest rate is 4%. And so we know that i is equal to 0.04. Okay, so now we know what r and i are. And so we'll be able to use those in this formula here. But what is this numerator part, right? What does the first term part mean? Well, what it means is that in this series of payments that we just wrote out, right, we valued each payment at the valuation date, we only really need the first term right here. We are going to take whatever this is and divide it by one minus one plus r divided by one plus i. And so if you don't quite understand this formula or why we're going to use this, be sure to check out our lesson and that will make it quite clear where this comes from. But what it allows us to do is skip a lot of unnecessary work that we would have to do otherwise if we followed the normal four-step process that we used for other geometric annuities, right? Since this is a perpetuity, we have a nice special formula that we can use to find that present value. And so for step two, we will have that the present value is equal to that first term, 500 times the present value factor, divided by one minus one plus r, which is 0 0.03, divided by one plus i, which is 0 0.04. Okay, and so if we simplify, this will be equal to 500. And then let's write out what this present value factor would be equal to. It's one divided by one plus i, which i is 0 0.04, and so that will be 1.04. And that will be divided by one minus 1.03 divided by 1.04. Okay, and so then if we plug all this into our calculator, we will find that this is equal to $50,000 right? This is the present value of this geometric perpetuity immediate where each payment increases by 3% each year. All right, so that's all there is to this problem. This present value formula that we found in our lesson is very helpful in making this process a lot quicker and honestly a lot easier. Okay, let's look at one more final example for this video. Okay, so for our last example, we have at an annual effective interest rate of I, the present value of a perpetuity immediate, starting with a payment of $300 the first year and increasing by $50 for each year thereafter, is $92,000. Find I. Okay, so in this problem, we have a perpetuity immediate that starts with a payment of $300 and then increases by $50 for each year thereafter. 
So we are looking at a perpetuity with an arithmetic progression, right? The payments are increasing by $50 every period. It is a set amount of $50. It's not 50%, it's not 5%, it's $50. And so we have an arithmetic perpetuity and not a geometric perpetuity. Okay, and so that means that we are going to be using the formula that the present value is equal to p divided by i plus x divided by i squared, where p is the amount of our initial payment or the first payment, and x is the amount at which each payment is increasing by. And then of course, i is still our interest rate that we are actually trying to find in this problem. We do not know what i is. And so let's write down everything we know. We know that our first payment is $300, and so P is equal to 300. And then we know that each payment is increasing by $50. And so we will have X is equal to 50. But then what is this $92,000 right here? Well, if we go back to the beginning of our problem, it says the present value of a perpetuity immediate with a payment of $300 and then increasing by $50 each year is $92,000. And so this $92,000 is the present value of this perpetuity. And so PV, or the present value, is equal to 92,000. All right, and so now let's plug each of these values into this formula. We will have that the present value, or 92,000, is equal to P, which is 300, divided by I, which we do not know, plus 50 divided by I squared. Okay, and so now what we want to do in this equation here is solve for I. And so what is the best way to go about this? Well, since we have i and i squared in the denominator of these two terms, I think what I want to do is multiply both sides of this equation by i squared. And so what that's going to do is eliminate these two fractions, right? So let me show you what I mean. If we take this whole equation and multiply both sides by i squared, we will have 92,000 i squared is equal to 300 divided by i times i squared plus 50 divided by i squared times i squared. And so then notice that these i squareds will cancel out and that this i and one of these i's will cancel out. And so what we'll have is that 92,000 i squared is equal to 300 times i plus 50. Okay, and so if we clean up our work here, what we now have resembles a quadratic function, right? We have a term with i squared, we have a term with i to the first power, and then we have a term with no i or no variable to any power. And so let's subtract these two terms over to the other side. And so if we do that, we'll have 92,000 i squared minus 300 i minus 50 equal to zero. And so then what you could do here is try to factor this quadratic. Now this could probably take you a while to figure out how to factor it, and so instead of wasting all that time, let's just use the quadratic formula, which is guaranteed to give us an answer for i, assuming that the answer exists. Which, spoiler alert, it does exist. There is an answer for i in this problem. And so hopefully you remember the quadratic formula. If not, I will write it down here. We will have that for this scenario that i is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And so if we use that for this equation right here, a is going to be 92,000, b is negative 300, and c is negative 50. And so I'm gonna write it up here. We will have that i is equal to negative negative 300, plus or minus the square root of negative 300 squared minus four times A, which is 92,000, times C, which is negative 50. And this is all divided by two times 92,000. Okay, so hopefully you have a calculator that you can use to go through this calculation. And if you do, you will get two different answers because remember we have plus or minus this square root and so you will find that i is equal to 0.025 and that i is equal to negative 0.0217 and then some more decimals. And so remember, we're looking for an interest rate here. And so if we think about this logically, we're not going to have a negative interest rate. And so we're not interested in this negative value of i. And so you can just cross that out and then determine that this is what i is equal to. i is equal to 0.025. 
This is the interest rate for this scenario where you have a perpetuity immediate that has an arithmetic progression. Okay, and so that is the solution to this problem. And this was the last example for this video. And so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.